All week we've been taking an in-depth look at genetically modified organisms or GMOs. We began with a report from Frank Contreras in Mexico. He brought us inside the controversy over corn in that country. Some there are pushing to keep the crop GMO free. In Argentina, Joel Richards told us about the fight some are picking over pesticides. While the industry maintains GMOs actually reduce the need for pesticides, some families disagree. We had a pair of reports from China and learned about the lack of GMO products grown in the country. Rice is one of the items still GMO-free. And in the European Union, Jack Barton reported from Germany about unique labeling standards. Later this year, lawmakers will debate whether those rules should be changed. And on the final day of our series, we have a report now from Jessica Stone. She explains that despite scientific studies generally concluding GMOs are safe, not everyone's convinced. She went along with a mother on her quest for a GMO-free experience at the grocery store. Aren't they good? Yeah, they're really good. And all it is is white bean quinoa lentil and chia. I bought two bags of them. Kim Groark approaches grocery shopping like detective work, where each label is a clue. There's no soy. There's no corn, there's no cottonseed, there's no canola. So, and, those are the and there's no genetic. sugar. This health conscious mother of two avoids buying genetically modified organisms or GMO. A New York Times poll released last summer shows 75% of Americans share her concerns, with many believing consuming GMOs can lead to allergies and cancer, even though most scientific research indicates otherwise. It could create super diseases resistant to antibiotics. Kim says she spends time each week reading studies about the genetic engineering of food. So far, there are no human health studies. Most research is on rats. Really, the one that hit home was a 123 PDF that I actually found on Earth Open Source. And it, dis it goes myth by myth. Biochemist Nina Fedorov has won the highest scientific awards in the United States and finds herself stunned at the growing anti-GMO movement. She says the practice has been going on for centuries without conclusive evidence it's harmful. All of our foods are genetically modified. I asked her about the specific worries about plants genetically altered to tolerate high doses of the herbicide glyphosate, an active ingredient in the weed killer Roundup, and the resulting impact on human health. It affects a biochemical pathway that, that animals and people don't even have. It kills plants, it has no effect on people. We're protesting you. Anti-GMO protests often focus on Roundup creator Monsanto because of its size and visibility. This group, Occupy Monsanto, organized global protests last fall, attracting thousands with a call to label GMO foods in the U.S. Their argument? We should know what we eat. Over 60 countries, I believe, have banned GM food or are requiring labeling. And at the very least, I would hope that we could jump on that, that wagon. All right. According to the U.S. Center for Food Safety, 26 states have proposed mandatory labeling laws, but none has passed. CCTV was in Washington state last summer when voters weighed in on the GMO labeling issue, ultimately rejecting it. And sooner or later, we will win. We will have labeling. The question is exactly whether Washington will be one of the first or one of the last states. They can look for both the organic and the non-GMO label. Both of those are 100% reliable and accurate. So we already have two labeling systems in place. Those working against mandatory GMO labeling in Washington state said it would confuse consumers and increase costs. Now, if it didn't say organic on the can and there was sugar, I wouldn't buy it. The reality is organic and non-GMO voluntary labeled foods are more expensive than non-organic genetically modified foods because less of this food is produced. You know, we don't have a flat screen TV <laughs> that's on hold. We don't, you know, we altered our cable schedule, cut down on phone costs, things like that. So we do budget a little extra for food um, and we're happy with that. Still, even that could change. One of the most popular cereals in the country just announced it's going GMO free. Here we go, we're all done. And with polls showing that more than 90% of Americans support GMO labeling, 
The market for GMO-free foods, despite the science, is only likely to grow. Jessica Stone, CCTV, Washington.